Buongiorno. Eh, molto felice di stare qui a Cali. Eh, molto felice di, di stare qui a Cali eh, di, eh, al Season Conference. E, eh, Grazie mille agli organizzatori eh, di eh, mi invitare per uh, uh, stare qui. Uh, so we'll start and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll leave my uh, broken tongue behind. Um, thank you very much uh, 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 for being here and I, what I want to do today uh, is to talk uh, a little bit about uh, various things that connect C sound to other things and how C sound sort of lives in a kind of ecosystem of of, uh, of practices and applications and um, music is made in, in different ways with C sound and it's, it's um, you know at the center of something. Um, so uh, I'm going to going to start. Uh, and, and it's inevitable that I would like to kind of go a little bit back. And uh, we could go back all the way to Germany in Africa, but uh, I think I prefer to, to start uh, with the beginning um, uh, in C-Sound. So C-Sound was first released in 1986. Uh, and there was a C uh, language port of Music 11, as many of you know, and that originally ran in Linux, and we have here a couple of our uh, uh, Music 11 veterans, uh, Rick and, and John, uh, who could tell us a lot, lot about how that, uh, how that worked. Um, um, in the beginning, the sound was just consisted consist of a, 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 a command line user interface, uh, take, um, working on a pair of in input text files and producing a sound file. But then over the years, it kind of became what you have been seeing in this conference, um, a, a center of a, a quite a remarkable sound and music uh, ecosystem, computing ecosystem. So in the beginning, there was Music 11, which is, um, we can consider that as a small ecosystem, software ecosystem on its own. Um, uh, really based around the Unix uh, operating system, which was a, a very new thing as well at the time. Um, so this is a, um, a figure from a paper by Barry Verko uh, describing Music 11 in 1983, describing how it can be uh, used as a, a, you know, within um, a kind of research uh, environment. Uh, and here you, 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 know, you had the things that they had there at the, at the lab, they had certain different types of input devices, and then you had um, things that would sort of uh, be used to um, pre-process uh, the, the, the data that you will get from the devices, and there will be then the running part which will make the synthesis. And uh, the interesting thing about this is that you can see the ecosystem there. You can see some things that are kind of external, to Music 11, things that are kind of more internal to Music 11 this way. But the, the most interesting thing about that is that these are different little bits of, connect, uh, of, of software that connected all together to make up Music 11. So you had the orchestra translator, you had the uh, sort, uh, sorting of the score, and you have uh, the most small, the Music 11 monitor, and the orchestra loader, and this is the running part of it. Now, when you, if you look at the uh, C-Sound source code today and after its many transformations, you would still recognize a few things there. There is a, uh, a function there called Moosmon, which is that one. There used to be a function called Artran, which we threw because we put in a, a new parser. Uh, there is also the, the, the carry sort tempo uh, elements. So all these things that were external in certain an ecosystem inside in Music 11 and got put together, thrown together into C sound as a kind of a monolithic block. Um, and so Music 11 then is kind of a modular system that's, uh, of software, besides being you know, the modular language that we know, put together. And then C sound kind of got that, transformed everything into C, all those things that were assembler, 
PDP-11 assembler, they were all into C, put them together in one block, and delivered that. And by being C into one block, it was kind of a, it was the key to be able to, for them to be able to distribute it. And then, you know, the story comes from there that we, we went to Bath and went to uh, other places, um, and we had all the versions that we have some. So this is early C sound, which is also already a centerpiece for a music research ecosystem, um, not only now in, in uh, Media Lab, but also elsewhere, you know, people are picking up and doing things. So you, you have uh, experimental ports of C sound, because C sound was not only very uh, easy to port, but also it was well documented in terms of, of, of its um, uh, having a manual and so on. And, and so due to the efforts of you know, Rick, we had um, you know, manuals being uh, transformed into Word documents and that you know, increasingly helped things to be, uh, to be uh, made into um, uh, available to people in, uh, using different systems. Uh, then you had implementations of these things. Uh, uh, you had, for instance, in the early 90s at the, uh, the uh, University of Durham, you had uh, a transputer implementation of C sound. Uh, there's a paper by SMC about that. We had um, then later on uh, by Verco uh, and Rick and the, and the team at analog devices uh, uh, ported C, C sound to run on, on, on Shark DSPs. Um, we had different experimental codes. Um, so, classic examples of this is uh, the, the first phase vocoder implementations from Dan Ellis, uh, which were kind of a really innovative because no other system had that power of spectral processing back in 1990. Uh, and then later on, uh, Michael Clark from Huddersfield ported his fourth code that used to run again, first in Music 11, he had a music, his own. Build of, uh, build of Music 11 in, in, that was in um, uh, when he was doing his PhD, um, uh, and then he ported it back into in, into C Sound, and um, when he was in a Huddersfield. So it's um, there was a lot of kind of research going on there. Um, uh, then throughout the decade, you had some kind of a different score processor programs that people. Uh, Syscore enabled a lot of people to do things like granular synthesis, you know, using uh, kind of lists of, of, of notes in, in the score. Um, MIDI was added in very early on in the 90s for certain machines, like the, the, kind of the most powerful sort of Unix workstations could do that. Real-time audio as well in, um, I remember back in 94, uh, or uh, we, I was already able to get some uh, real-time audios out of a Sun machine running C sound, which so it was a great thing. I mean, um, uh, and then you had uh, Cecilia from Jean Pichet, which was, I think, the prototypical kind of front end. So that's the front end that started the front ends. So the idea of having a front end to the command line and uh, working by um, cleverly using the Unix system, not even touching C sound, C sound is still this block of process running here and then you're con connecting via pipes and you, know, you have a completely separate interface, but with real-time control and so on. And running on, when it run on, so on the um, RX uh, workstations, uh, the SGIs, you could do everything in real time, it was could process great. If you could afford an SGI back then, you had it. Um, so great stuff um, are happening, um, and at the end of the, the decade, then you start because this you know this was really available, you know, uh, to a lot of people, and a lot of people start picking it up and doing little bits uh, here and there. Forks of C sound start appearing in different places. So um, there are three things that are, are worth mentioning about this. Um, first of all, you have uh, Gabriel Maldonado who, uh, uh, you know, worked here in Italy uh, and uh, providing a, his direct C sound, which, which was uh, Windows 95, then Windows 98 and, uh, uh, program, uh, effectively a version, a, a port, uh, you know, using that the direct 
I.O. Um, uh, drivers um, to make uh, 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 to make to, to provide real-time audio in, on Windows, and he also using the Photic uh, interface that, uh, that he added doing kind of widget opcodes and so on. Uh, and on the side, on the Mac side, Matt Ingalls then um, picked up C sound, developed something called the Libc sound, uh, 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 and put in some, some hooks in it, and were able to make uh, the Mac C sound uh, uh, front end and a Max MSP XR. So that was kind of a late, uh, late 90s, early 2000s. Uh, and at the same time, John kept maintaining kind of uh, what then became known as a canonical C sound. She was, uh, you know, basically uh, the best cuts uh, assembled into a kind of a logical thing, uh, keeping a, a kind of a sane version of C sound going, uh, of C sound 4 going for, for many, uh, many years. Um, so uh, then we come to the uh, first decade of the uh, the this century, and uh, we have uh, the impending C sound five. So what happened was we had reached uh, uh, the, the latest versions of C sound with uh, at C sound I think four four point twenty one I think uh, where uh, uh, an incipient API was introduced to the system. What that was a, a, a complete hack where you got the monolithic C sound uh, made into a, a lip C sound uh, and bolted onto a C API on top of that. Uh, and then a lot of that work was due to Michael Gogins and, and uh, due to uh, Matt Ingalls and Istan Varga. So putting those things and trying to get uh, the, the uh, sort of a a working API. So there was uh, a lot of problems because you could, although you could embed C sound into an application, you could only embed once, once uh, C sound once in the application. And I mean once, not only once in the sense that one at a time, but once you had to stop the whole application to start again. You couldn't sort of, as we do today, stop C sound, start again, like C sound QT does. Very, a very uh, kind of a hack implementation, but that gave, gave us the way and provided the philosophy that um, uh, built C Sound 5, that was in built in, in C Sound 5. Um, in C Sound 5, we have a complete system re-engineering. Uh, uh, and with that, um, uh, what, we, what we did was um, we, we made the, what was proposed in CSUN4 uh, correct right. So effectively, we encapsulated the CSUN into what we call re-entrant uh, CSUN. So it means that it's really all the memory that CSUN uses is in one single block. block. It's, it, it's completely separate from everything else. So you can have many of these, and they don't clash with each other. Because before you had everything, the memory was spread out, and if you start another one, it just clash. So um, there was a lot of unification of earlier forks. Things were brought in. So for instance, the, the stuff, a lot of the things from uh, direct C sound came into, into uh, C sound 5. Uh, some of the things, most of the things from Matt Engels also came in, like the uh, in value of codes and the, and, uh, the, the kind of a, his channel system, uh, bus channel system came into. Uh, and um, and then a, a C API with a C++ uh, wrapper was provided, um, allowing extensive manipulation of uh, of the engine operation, and you have, could have full embedding of applications. So that was done right, uh, and then it is allowed uh, lots of things. So, for instance, you you had interfaces to Tico TK. And that allowed us to write a new Cecilia that was fully, in, where C sound was fully embedded into. Um, Java allowed Blue to be to embed C sound. Um, with Blue, it was a pre-existing program that only talked to C sound in a command line, and then was able then to embed C sound. There was a, a Python interface that became quite important. People start using it, and then you had um, th this allowed front ends to be to become. Proper front ends where uh, 
Cisan was inside. So Andreas Cabrera did uh, uh, QTC sound, which became then Cisan QT later on, uh, and Roy started the cabbage. Uh, we had externals for uh, PD and Max and SP. Then we had ports to mobile devices. So, you know, it gave us a great flexibility to do lots of little things. Um, so, uh, by 2013, you know, we couldn't do much more with the code base of CSAM5. So, we had to stop, go back, and try to reorganize it, re engineer the whole, uh, the whole system so that uh, things uh, were clearer because the hacks started piling up as we couldn't change things, so we did um, provisional changes to the, um, to the system so that uh, uh, at that time then, oh, we can't go now, it's gonna break, so anything that we do to expand or to improve will break, and we can't really do that much. So we uh, updated the API, we provided a new parser, a new compiler, uh, we did a load of language improvements. Uh, we introduced a hard real-time mode. Uh, we introduced sample level accuracy and various other internal changes I can't uh, list here. So um, a lot of things happened in 2013 and we, got, we had a completely re-engineered system which was also much more solid and easier to maintain. And we could, and then system, at, this, at the same time, Stephen started sort of documenting bits of the internal system so, uh, uh, so that it becomes easier for people to come in, oh, if I want to contribute, you know, how does the thing work and where are the bits of code that we need to change to do certain things. So we started to do uh, a lot of things. And now, and with CSAM 6 then, we, the full <coughs> promise of CSAM 5 became a uh, reality in the sense that we, CSAM became the center of, of an ecosystem of platforms uh, from embedded devices to mobile and desktop to, to the web and starting from the, 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 the smallest of devices all the way to supercomputers and uh, in all this range of platforms CISOM uh, can be run. Um, so as you all know this, this is CISOM, um, we're running a little thing there. And you know, it gives us, us the flexibility of uh, uh, changing uh, uh, sounds very. So it, it's how much uh, kind of um, a word away from, uh, for instance, the um, um, the old monolithic. Uh, uh, program that, that I um, uh, was telling you. So, so things like that, and uh, and then you can do things that like things that um, you heard uh, heard for doing yes, uh, yesterday in the concert, uh, doing you know a bit of um, uh, kind of a li live coding and. Um, uh, Something like this. in a very sort of um, uh, uh, anywhere you like, including in your presentation. Um, so it, it pretty much some can be embedded anywhere that, that you want. Um, and so it's, um, uh, we can describe now, and I, that's the way I, I, I like to describe it, and I think it's sort of it's picking up a little bit, uh, thinking of C-Sound as uh, a sound and music computer system. Because, you know, what is the sound? Or well, is it a language? Is it a, um, uh, a sound engine? Is it a, a music composition system? Is it a, a music software? What is it? So I think the, the, the definition of C sound as a sound and music computer system 
uh, sort of um, catches all these things and, and provides us with uh, you know, something. Oh, what you do? Oh, you see sound. What's this sound? Oh, it's a sound and music computing system. Um, it's, a, um, it's a great thing to do electronic music, uh, to, to, to research, to do teaching, and to do general audio music applications. Uh, so this is the whole ecosystem that I'm talking about. And uh, I'd like to spend the rest of my, uh, of my talk uh, to talk, show a, a little bit of a, a kind of sample a little bit of this ecosystem. And, um, and provide sort of a, a, um, an overview of what, you know, a few things, you know, probably miss a lot of, of the things that we can, we're doing with it, but we're seeing a lot here in this conference. Um, and uh, and at, then uh, at, at the end of the talk, then talk about what, where we, we should go to. So, uh, Let's talk about the, the ecosystem, the, the C-Sound ecosystem. Um, one thing that I, w this is a diagram that uh, I uh, kind of uh, extracted from, from the book, and I think that one, uh, it sort of describes a little bit what, the way I feel about the system, the way I feel uh, all the things, how they're organized, and the way people sort of interact with it, and how they can come into level into different levels. So you have at the top the music application level. So here's general users. And here's a, a level where people interacting with the system might not even know they're using C, the C sound. So uh, Rick is talking about the Qubit uh, Nebula. And uh, that's a, a, a neural rack module where people are doing all sorts of manipulations and using C sound. But they, some of them, will, people will not C sound. What's C sound? It's a sound and music computing system. Uh, but they, they don't know what they're doing. They don't know what they're, they're that, what, that actually they're using this sound. Um, there are, with Cabbage, uh, you have a whole host of users that are using C sound um, as plugins, and they have, don't have a, a, a clue that that's, that's doing, that they're using. Uh, the 250,000 plus uh, uh, Hadron users, uh, most of them won't have a, a, a clue. I don't think there are 250,000 uh, CSUN users in the world. So um, uh, I think that uh, 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 most of them won't have a clue to use CSUN. So at that level, it's the application level. You, 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 know, you don't even need to program. You, you just need to use it. Uh, but then you can start descending uh, uh, at that level, and you can uh, Somewhere there, people start picking up and modifying. Oh, well, there's, a, uh, there's a score, we can add notes to it. Or, you know, we can uh, start modifying the instruments. And then you descend down to the lead level of the music programming language, where people will be interacting with C sound, um, who, people who are mostly the musicians, electronic musicians, computer music people who start programming, and that, that makes uh, the biggest number of us, you know doing that. And researchers such as uh, the Kuti uh, the brothers here uh, that who were, uh, you know, doing bits of research and using CSUN as a vehicle for their, for their research and to, to, to work out ideas you, and everything else. So that's a level. And then that level is also a level where you start using the things around CSUN. So you have uh, people using uh, uh, Haskell to kind of a Compose and you see sound as the sound engine. People using uh, Holfer using his uh, sound uh, 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 live, live coding system and connecting with it. Uh, you have um, uh, people using Python to to do all sorts of things to print out uh, to to do uh, their tests and then come out with graphs and things like that. You know everything. Either at this level here is a very thick level. Of lots of things happening. But then it, uh, it starts quickly descending down, and some of your Python uh, experiments become, you know, more serious, and you, you start making, uh, making opcodes, and you're making applications, and you're making. So then you start developing front ends, or you start developing using the API, or you start uh, then developing like his own system for live coding. 
so not as a user, but then as, a, as actually a, um, a programmer. And then you go down, uh, you know, you start using, uh, uh, creating your own codes in C, C++. Um, and also at this level here, to notice that, you know, you, there's a place here where you can write things in other languages such as Faust and, and run it in C sound. And that's kind of um, becomes like a kind of a, a transition there. And then at the, at the lower end, people would be, uh, oh, it's broken, so we'll fix it. Uh, or we need to add a new option, so I'll, I'll, I'll add a new thing and then I'll do a PR. Uh, and uh, oh, yeah, that's great. Looks really good. Come into the system. So with the GitHub um, pull request system, it's, it's very good for people to contribute to the system. There's lots of people who do that. So different levels of, of interaction and uh, different languages that you can interact. So when we're talking about the programming, you have all the host, the whole rows of uh, whole um, host of things that you can do. You can do things purely in C sound, C++, in Java, and Python, JavaScript, which I didn't mention too much, PD, Faust, OpenCL, Haskell, Lisp, Lua. So it's, uh, again, a whole uh, ecosystem of languages as well that can be sort of used with around the C sound. So uh, it, now it would be interesting to uh, tease out three aspects of this ecosystem that uh, will be uh, where we can show examples because one thing is telling oh people are doing all these things but it would be good to show they're actually doing it and with examples. So I'm going to tease out three aspects of this uh, ecosystem. The first one uh, that I'm going to talk about is CSound as a research platform. CSound is a fully featured research platform. If you, uh, I, was, I was talking to Gleb yesterday, uh, you know, you want to do uh, signal processing research. You don't need anything. You can use, do everything. All your signal processing research in CSound. Uh, it's good to use Python if you want to print stuff or if you want to plot stuff, you want to transform stuff into LaTeX for your papers or something like that. But CSound can give every, all the data, everything in, in there. You don't can do all the programming in there. Um, in fact, so talking about our own experience with that, uh, in Minuth, this is our, has been our fundamental uh, environment for pr prototyping for maybe uh, 20 years. We, we, that's what we have been using to uh, do prototyping, to do implementation, and then to do deployment or research, you know, stuff that we did out and we deploy out and it ends up somewhere in C sound and people use and so on. Um, so our research in sound music computing in, 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 in Minuf has uses C sound as, as the main platform. Um, for as an example, this is a, a work uh, of uh, master students from last year who was doing uh, uh, research into human interface devices um, and. Play a little video.
So this work is uh, uh, basically what is a, um, a work where um, work where he 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 was looking at the, uh, there's a protocol called uh, human interface devices protocol, and so he looked at uh, how that can be implemented inside CSUN, and so uh, what's uh, what vehicle for this uh, or what the controller. Uh, I have a PS4, so yeah, PS4 is a HID device, so let's use that as the example for this. But you can also do HID in sort of the trackpads and stuff, so it's kind of a, the research is on HID, but he uses the, this is a kind of, to demonstrate that, uh, that, that work. Uh, and it became a set of codes that he did, and he has it in his own repo, uh, and uh, is available for people to use. So, um, and the, one of the things that, a side effect of this is that uh, the PS4 uh, is, a controller, is a great controller. Uh, in other platforms such as PD and Max and C is a pain to get working because it, there it's just a, uh, it's really hard to sort of get the configuration and thing. We see sound is just plug and play. You just have a, they have an opcode for the PS4 and just plug in, here you go, run, map this, the controls, and fine. Uh, so it's a kind of a, the type of research that we do kind of at the master's level, but using CSUN as our basis. Um, now this is uh, some late, it's kind of latest research that I've been working with uh, to implement the idea that we published with uh, Avin and Sigurd uh, maybe a couple of years back uh, on the time varying convolution, the live convolution idea. Uh, we have an op code called TVCons, uh, which it has been used you know, in the cross-adaptive project. I've used in some of my stuff. But I thought, uh, oh, there's a limit to what you can do with this, because, <clears throat> so here, uh, I've got to show you four plots, and the, the top plot here is the, uh, the original TV com. And as you can see, uh, sorry, the, the four plots, the, 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 the uh, solid line is the original TV com. So what you have here is, um, the partition size is M, part convolution partition size, and the um, uh, what you have on the X is the size of your filter. So in uh, in powers of the powers of two, so two to the power sixteen, two to the power seventeen, two to the power eighteen, and so on. Um, and you can see uh, that with the original thing, as you get increase the the filter, it becomes harder and harder to run in real time, up to a point that about Two to the power of twenty-two, which is a very large duration, by the way, uh, in seconds. Um, so it's two to the power of twenty-two seconds. You know, it's a few minutes uh, going there. Uh, you start be, you know, not being able to run it in real time. Okay, so you can't run it in real time. But what if you want to have a future that is that long and then to your for your um, uh, for your performance? Well, then you have to go parallel because you can see. Uh, so if you ignore the, the little dots, uh, you look at the dashes, you can see how the parallel uh, implementation is um, very much stable. You, 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 you can change the filter uh, uh, size and you only drop a little bit in terms of performance. Uh, in the, and then as you get your partition higher, you get really, really good performance. And this here, this means that you can have about 170, uh, this is like 175 uh, uh, of codes running at the same time before you, you know, so here, just about there, uh, uh, you can run, if you're running in parallel, you can run 100, over 150 uh, instances of, of your time varying convolution in real time, okay? Um, so, uh, Great, uh, you know, and the, the platform that allowed us to investigate that and see, you know, what the parallelism that can work is C sounds. Um, so to give you a, 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 an idea of this, uh, I've done a little performance uh, improvisation uh, using this of code.
So, um, you may wonder, oh God, this must be a very complex um, uh, you know, instrument that you're using there with lots of different things happening. Uh, it turns out to be a one-liner. Um, so, yeah. Uh, and this was, you know, of course, there's a, lots of things that can be improved about this, but just as a test, I think, uh, kind of, um, is an interesting one that, that, that uh, can, can be done. So, um, uh, okay, so the other thing that I want to talk about is how C sound kind of fits in with embedded systems. Um, so, and that's a really nice thing that's happening that small computing devices can be used, can use C sound um, natively and you can embed it in different things. You have then the work that uh, Alex is doing with Bernd that you, you know, you're making little boxes and you can uh, embed it and you can have Eurorack modules, you, uh, modules, you can have all sorts of, of little things. So, um, one w work that we did a few years back uh, is the C sound kind of running on the uh, Galileo device. Uh, 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 So my internet um, has disappeared, but we might be able to get it back on. Uh, this is the Intel Galileo. Okay, we'll start from here, so the cross compiled I'm going to hear it. Um, Just, uh, it kind of runs very well on a very, very poor computing device. And then they got a better, uh, developed a better board, uh, and someone, someone... Hello, I'm John Mar Silva. I would like to show you the synthesizer I did using an Intel Edison board and one uh, MIDI controller uh, with an embedded audio interface. This is the default Linux image we have available at software.intel.com slash IoT with AUSA and C sound uh, installed. We can add some more effects. It's even uh, polyphonic, so... with a similar thing they did on, uh, made on, on Intel Galileo and to Victor uh, that helped me a lot with his uh, posts from the CSound project. So this is what I did, what will you make? So uh, this is a, a, an Intel guy who, uh, oh we can make a, you made a synthesizer on, Galileo, on the Galileo, let's make one for the Yet and he just did it. So it so, just shows that um, things are very kind of simple. So you have the QB, uh, Qubit Nebula, which you, you heard yesterday quite a bit, um, and you know about it. Uh, you have um, Balasi Sound, which is a work uh, that we have been doing with Alex and Bernd, uh, and we have several iterations, and Bella is a fantastic platform. 
recommend it to anyone who wants to work with real-time devices and things. Very, very good, hard real-time. Uh, and uh, I guess uh, Alex can attest to that from the concert yes, uh, yesterday uh, as a guitarist. Uh, um, and then the novel thing that's coming just in the horizon, it just happened, uh, is that C-Sound is going to be incorporated into the Elk platform, which is a, an operating system for uh, music devices and instruments. So with that, then you can just get Elk and put in your little thing, and uh, it, run, it will, should run on several different uh, platforms and systems. And I think this um, it's a good, good alternative to Bella as well. Uh, it's Bella is married to a single platform. Elk is uh, open to loads of platforms. So the way this works is with uh, Boris Cabbage, you will be making plugins, and then you'll be running on Elk. You should probably be able to run C-Sound pure there, but that's the most preferred way that they, they want you to, to do. Um, so that's a lot on, on the embedded devices. Um, then there's Web Audio C-Sound. Uh, you know, C-Sound available on the web platform uh, since 2014, and we have done quite a lot of work, and a lot of new technologies have come on stream, like the WASM, uh, pro providing a very fast kind of a, um, um, a bytecode that can run uh, alongside the JavaScript. And then the Audio Worklet API that provides a, a better performance for, for uh, and lower latency. Uh, we have plenty of examples um, to show you. I'll just show you one uh, simple uh, uh, one there here. Uh, so, step sequencer. So that gives you an idea of um, uh, uh, where uh, where are we? Go out to that back into my presentation. Um, and lots of things you can do. Uh, we we can use it to do anything. And there's a web ID project that um, um, Stephen is uh, with Ed and Rodver. Uh, doing uh, in very uh, very promising for delivering an IT on the web, which then you can embed anywhere any web page, uh, and it would probably be very good for 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 teaching. Um, and of course, we can't um, neglect that C sound is a music instrument, and lots of music applications, lots of music composition uh, beyond the things that we have been seeing. Uh, so, uh, CSound QT, uh, Blue, uh, Cabbage, as you know, uh, uh, Wing X Sound, which uses just an ordinary uh, uh, command line C sound, uh, and uh, Lodra's um, uh, uh, C sound mode for Emacs, which I would recommend uh, very much. Uh, Emacs is uh, fantastic type of uh, fantastic uh, editor that allows you to run C sound inside it. Uh, and I would just like to, again, mention a little bit more about Cabbage because I have been saying here, it's just basically, uh, Cabbage uh, sort of is stepped at the top for us in the production studio because then with the, uh, the provision uh, of Cabbage, then you will allow, C sound allowed them to be embedded in the production studio uh, and in, in many ways that we don't even imagine, you know, how people can be using this. People that would know about it, C sound, and people wouldn't know about C sound. Um, it's just another VST that people are running. So, uh, kudos to Rory for uh, developing that to a very kind of a high standard and uh, solid sort of work. Um, so, what's now then? Uh, weren't you? Well, CSound 7 that we've been talking about in the past three years, but we haven't done anything about it in a, a very practical way. But here we want to provide a, an improved system, a system that will give us uh, new language facilities, 
will give us an expanded uh, API. Uh, we'll provide uh, us to uh, another chance to review internals and clean up stuff that's accumulated in the, since 2013 that needs to be re-engineered and re, uh, refactored. Uh, and amongst, amongst the things that myself, I'm thinking that we really need to be doing and very particular about is this thing uh, that uh, to make people able to run EDOs in a very efficient way when they're co uh, computing sample by sample. And I kind of mocked up uh, uh, an example of how this could be, could be achieved in, in a, not a so complicated way. So here I wanted to sort of show that um, you can transpile an opcode um, into uh, a C++ plus plus um, opcode for compilation. In not, and it's not a lot to do, a lot of work to do. So that the, you, you translate the name and the, the types that you use for the opcode directly into uh, lines and instructions there for inside for the opcode and um, statements in the opcode. Uh, any audio uh, variables that you, that you create are declared uh, as, as uh, allocated memory for in the opcode there. So you have this uh, house mem allocates the memory for that. Any um, control rate uh, variables become variables in, for the opcode in the class there. So uh, the KRs, the KC1, KC2, becomes the variables there. So that kind of takes care of that. And then you look at the, uh, at the code that, you, that you're running. Uh, um, any code that is um, uh, control rate uh, gets executed only once every time you call it to process. So control rate produces once a single sample, so it gets put there. Any code that is uh, algebra rate gets put into a, a loop and calculated. And the translation between that code and this C++ code is very, very simple. So see, pretty much you can take each one of these statements and translate to a, a statement in C++. Um, and that gets, the reason why this becomes really efficient is because in the opcode here, if this is running at ksums1, it means that every single operation here is a function call. The multiplication, this multiplication, this, uh, this, uh, this uh, additions here, well, uh, subtractions, and this um, as, uh, assignment, this assignment, and so on. Um, whereas in there, they just becomes a single line in the code, processing, you know, sample by sample. So it's much more efficient. And at the end, you just copy the, your, that, so that gets translated. Send it out to doctors so this is your copy of the data out. So that compilation is, is possible, it's achievable. You look, and how do we achieve it? I mean, CSAT is a parser. You just look at the output of the parser and you produce that thing. Um, so this is one of the thing, ways you can do translate UGOs to UGOs binary, but there are other ways that can be possible. You could do that with just-in-time compilation as well. Lots of ideas there. Uh, and I think that's something that we really should be looking at. Um, so we, we want also to provide increased connectivity. Uh, we want, want to provide more embedding, want to provide light versions, different grades of, of versions so that I can put in small hardware and larger hardware and so on. Uh, we have to have want to have more modular components uh, in the system. And in terms of, of a community, we want increased participation. I mean, we have a whole host of uh, third party projects. We want that to continue and to increase. Uh, we want to look for a package system. And I think there's, uh, um, we, don't, we shouldn't write one. Uh, uh, and I think there's a good candidate for packaging system. Uh, and we might uh, put that in. Uh, we want more system developers, uh, which means that we are open recruiting, recruiting open recruitment for uh, system developers who want to join in the, the main development team. If you are thinking that you'd like to do that, please come talk to me to uh, send an email to Stephen or to John. And uh, you know, we, we want you in the team because we need help. I mean, we're not getting any younger. Uh, and we want the, the thing to, to move on uh, and um, 
you know, the system, it's, it's, it's hard to maintain it only in a small team of three. We want this to be, and also to be shared more widely. And we want to have better system documentation, which Steven started, but we should continue to do more. Um, so that's how, grazie mille.